Hi there, my name is Timmy Joe. <laughs> I make videos about computers on the internet, and here we are. We're in my dank basement. It's been a while since I've been down here, mostly because it's it's dank down here, that's for sure. But my main PC is hooked up down here. I do all my video editing at this desk, and I've been doing some uh, testing, as you saw, with uh, RX Vega 64. I have been playing video games, been using it in everyday life, been just having a good time checking it out and doing some video editing, checking out the performance on it, and you know what? I made a video bashing it, and I still hold true, you know, it still holds true that the price on it and availability is ridiculous, but in, in the performance aspect, I gotta say, I don't notice um, any sort of a difference between it and the 1080 performance-wise. It's pretty much right on par when it comes to video games, high resolution gaming, this is a 4K monitor, and uh, video editing has been kind of pretty much the same. I actually like to see maybe it might be even just a little bit faster, so that is some good stuff. So I got to thinking, uh, as the prices come down, we just had the 56 launch, and uh, there's gonna be some board partner stuff launched soon. Maybe there's the fam, you know, the diehard fanboys, even though they've been dwindling on this subject, uh, are gonna be able to get their hands on them soon and the prices might start coming down a bit and uh, Maybe you're looking to actually still pick one up and you want to know what it takes to power uh, One of these suckers now I've been harping on the thing for really needing some hardcore watts because I had this very power supply Which is a 650 watt power supply in my Ryzen 7 system with the Frontier Edition Vega card And I was running into some power issues some hard uh, shutoffs at high resolutions and I knew it was the power supply because when I switched it out to this baby 750 didn't have the issues anymore now I've been running the 750 this whole time and ha not had an issue so we know that this works this is the recommended spec for RX Vega uh, for direct from AMD but I got to wondering if you are maybe planning this build uh, you probably are gonna do it on Ryzen because there's no way you're an Intel guy and you're gonna be buying a Vega card. I don't see that happening, but maybe you just upgraded to Ryzen, you got a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7, and you wanna see what it actually takes to power the freaking thing. Uh, you, might be, you might be interested in a video like this. So I have a pretty large sample size here. Now this isn't as scientific as it could be, because I only have five power supplies ranging from 500 to 750. We know that 750 works, and all these are different brands. But I think that's a good thing because uh, there's so many different power supply brands out there so many different ratings on them that it's possible uh you know that it, 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 you're not even getting the watts that's written on the freaking thing it all depends on really how good it is so this is an evga 500 we have an ocz fatality 550 watt that doesn't even have uh you know like a gold marking on it or an 80 plus marking on it at all so that's got me questioning some things. We have a 600 watt ITX uh, or SFX uh, from D uh, FSP, the Dagger. I know this to be a very, very good power supply, even though it's mini. 650 watt uh, gold plus from Vivo, and then my FSP that I know has been working. So what I wanted to do is not only test all these with my Ryzen 7, but cut some cores out and get some numbers on whether or not you know you can run a 600 watt power supply with maybe a Ryzen 5 uh, 1500X or a 1600, or uh, you know if maybe 600 is even good enough to run Vega uh, with uh, you know an overclocked Ryzen 7 1700. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. So uh, we're going to do some testing. We're going to do a little bit of uh, the montage thing. We're not going to bore you too much with actually like physically switching everything out because there's a lot of work to do here. But by the time I'm done, I'm going to draw some conclusions and then we'll go over kind of what I think uh, the minimum power supply people have out there and uh, some research I've done into that. So cue, cue it up and we'll we'll get started. We'll get the, the benchmarks going and we'll, we'll make it happen. Wah!
better overclock to the gills on this. And just in case you wanted to hear what 4,000 RPM sounds like. Predator! Hi there, it's Timmy Joe back from uh, rounds and rounds of power supply switching and PSU and what have you and things and stuff. I have some conclusions, I have some things to say. So let's just get right into it. So I wanted to do a little bit of research and I was looking around the internet trying to see like what power supply, you know, what are people buying these days? And I went through a couple of things, some Googles, you know, and I came up with a few things. So, uh, you know, I looked at Newegg, what's the top selling? You know, it's anywhere from like a 750 watt or a 430 watt EVGA. It's hard to tell. Amazon's kind of the same thing. I see a lot of 650, 750 watt. So I think that's kind of what the enthusiasts are buying. Even look at websites like Hard Boiled. What's the top best freaking things of 2016, whatever. Like, you know, most of the time it's either like 7, 6, 750 or it's like way lower than that. And I think that's because people are either enthusiasts or they're miners and they're buying like crazy good stuff or they're building PCs for homes and offices and you don't need a good power supply for that. So uh, then I thought maybe I'll check out this guy, freaking our Lord and Savior Linus makes a video every single year where he takes his Amazon affiliates and he makes it a computer based on what people are buying and he has this to say. EVGA is still in power when it comes to PSUs. But this time, you guys forewent the 650 watt fully modular Supernova G1, which fell to third place, and went for the cheaper 500 watt non modular 80 plus bronze B1 series. So, what he's saying there is uh, in 2016, people were buying 650 watt power supplies at the top, and then it moved to really cheap ones. Uh, probably one better than this. This is a 500 watt, and it doesn't have a bronze rating. This is just 80 plus. He's talking about bronze, so it's probably a little bit better than this one. But uh, what he's basically saying is people aren't worried about their power supplies, and that's because I could run a 1080 not a TI, but a 1080 on this 500 watt power supply, no problem, without a doubt, for sure. Because the power draw on them just isn't there anymore with uh, Pascal. But Vega, completely different story, and people weren't really thinking about that. And more than likely, you know, you've got a Ryzen, you got, you know, a Vega, you're gonna need a pretty hefty power supply. So I have some conclusions. I made a chart. Oh yeah, so let's get to the results. So real quickly here, when I'm talking overclocked Ryzen, that's my Ryzen 7 1700 overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz with 32 gigs of uh, 2666 memory in there. And I have a uh, hard drive, like a mechanical hard drive, four terabyte with a one uh, SSD that's like a scratch drive and an NVMe drive in there. So this is a pretty typical use case. I don't have this thing loaded with uh, hard drives. It's, uh, you know, it's got some fans and stuff in it. I don't even have my AIO in there right now. So this is a pretty typical computer. And we can see right off the bat this EVGA 500 watt Boom! Fails right off the bat. I started the tests always at the uh, Ryzen 7 at stock speeds. It could not complete at that. I moved down the ranks and even when I eliminated four cores from the system, it would not run Fire Strike through all the way without a hard crash requiring me to turn the power supply off all the way and then wait a second and turn it back on then the computer would turn back on so any use of vega with this thing would cause a hard crash now it says that on the 12 volt rail it outputs 480 watts uh which is kind of weird because this is a uh 550 watt and it actually did complete some tests uh, but when I started looking at the ratings on the side of it, and this is an older power supply, this thing's brand new, this is a little bit older, it's, it's at least a couple years old, it says it outputs 450 50 watts on the 12 volt rail. So, you know what? These are pretty much equal, even though this one says it's got a higher rating on it, and this isn't even gold rated, and it was able to complete some tests. So you're going to see variation between, you know, manufacturers and types of power supplies. This being the fatality, you know, from OCZ, probably maybe there's something in there that allows for a little bit more juice to flow, but it still pretty much fails across the board. It was getting a uh, fail uh, halfway through the second 
round of uh, Fire Strike Extreme uh, on the 1700 stock, and then it would uh, actually pass the 16, like the six cores. Uh, the 1600 mock-up that I did through Ryzen Master and it passed the 1500. So it's, you know, no overclocking on those CPUs. You could maybe get away with using a crappy power supply. I would not recommend it, however. So moving up to a 600 watt PSU. I know this is a little baby PSU, but I actually really like it. And I trust that this thing is a very good one. It's 80 plus gold it's from FSP. They make really good power supplies. And it says it outputs 600 watts on the 12 volt rail. And I probably believe it because it did a very good job at keeping up. However, it's still was questionable on the overclocked Ryzen 1700. I got it to do the tests, but I had some crashing uh, and I wasn't sure what was going on there that I wasn't really, it was happening sporadically where the computer would uh, just reset, soft reset and it would start all up again, but not while I was running graphics tests, which was weird. And I was, that was on stock and everything. So uh, I would say this is questionable, but you could probably run Ryzen 5 1600 or 1500X in a 600 watt power supply with Vega. If you're careful, if maybe you already have a 600 watt and those, you know, you, you weren't thinking of upgrading, you could give it a try. And if it's giving you problems, you know where the problem lies. But uh, it actually did make it through all of the round of tests, but I would say the overclocked was questionable, wasn't worth testing the actual Vega card overclocked. Moving on to the Vivo 24K 650 watt gold rated power supply. It says it outputs 624 watts on the 12 volt rail. And I believe it, maybe those 24 watts were just enough to keep this thing going. It passed all the tests except for Wattman overclocked on the RX uh, uh, Vega and it even still completed the test, but I ran the uh, Firestrike stress test and Firestrike itself said it did not pass because there was some dropped frames and stuff like that. But uh, if you didn't overclock Vega and just had the, um, uh, the Ryzen overclocked, it passed with flying colors as you see here. So uh, you know what? With a really good 650 watt power supply, I think you could probably get away with having a Ryzen 7 system and not too many hard drives and run RX Vega and have some room to overclock. Would I recommend that however? Hell no. The recommended power supply for Vega is 750 watts and I would say you're probably better off just getting a 750 watt power supply that you trust. Unless maybe you're you know, building the system, you're on a little bit of a budget, you already have a 650 watt power supply, go on, give it a try. Maybe you got Ryzen 5 and you wanna do some overclocking, you have a 600 watt power supply, go ahead and give it a try. But if you start getting soft resets, if you start getting some anomalous readings, I would start by even running uh, some, some real stress tests on your GPU and seeing if it gets through them. And if you have any resetting, you'll know what the culprit is. So um, all in all, I would say my 750 watt is where I would stick with uh, with Vega. And uh, you know what? Pretty much came to what, what I thought would be the conclusion here, except for I thought maybe this wouldn't make it through the tests and it did. So uh, good for you, you little Vivo 650 watt power supply. I'm Matt Watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter. I dare you to go play Ding Dong Ditch with that bell on beside the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. Do all that good stuff. I know that I stole that line from somebody. You can also check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Watch Timmy Joe. I had a lot of fun playing with power supplies today, checking out, seeing if you know we could run Vega on some lower tiered hardware. But when it's all said and done, it's probably better to follow the manufacturer's specs. Uh, unless you, you know, you, you really want to try and be budgetary and save some money and you already have at least a 600 watt power supply and you're going with like Ryzen 5 or you don't plan on overclocking too much. Maybe you don't have a lot of hard drives or something like that or some things and stuff. And we all know there's going to be some guy in the, the comments that says, Hey, Jimmy Joe, you're a moron. You didn't run Farmark. You didn't run Prime 95. You didn't run freaking NASA 
supercomputer, whatever. And you know what, to you, I just say that this is me testing what I have available, and I thought it might be a good video and a good place to start for someone that uh, you know doesn't have a power supply or they're questioning whether something will work with Vega because uh, some board partner stuff's coming out from Vega, and uh, we're going to be seeing a little bit more of them. And the fanboys will be buying them because you know what, I have a free sync monitor and I don't dare deviate from AMD ever. I'll see you guys in the next video. I love AMD. Uh, Vega's not so bad. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's questionable. I'll see you guys later.